just like to say, Crystal, <laughs> thank you. You could have gave me a warning. <laughs> but anyway. and welcome back all right it is saturday morning and um saturday morning for me is a cleaning morning out in the studio and you'll see why in a minute because i've made a disaster area out here again but i am here for the start of a reading vlog and basically i have been um a group of us are doing a video this time can we trust crystal from bon book reviews so um and i always go to call her bon because of the channel name so i'm sorry crystal if i call you bon during this vlog i do apologize for that i don't know my brain just goes to that and i'm super sorry all right so with that out of the way uh, that as i said we're here for a reading vlog i'm going to be reading three books that have been um <clears throat> a list was given to us and we chose off that list so and generally uh these are the favorite series books author, whatever the case may be. Now, to be honest, to be fully transparent, uh, I do watch Crystal, but I feel like Crystal is a bit of a eclectic reader, so I'm not really sure what Crystal's favourite genre is. I'm leaning towards dark romance, but I think that she might also be a bit of a historical girly too. So I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you know what Crystal's reading uh, is, but I feel like she's a little bit like me and very, very eclectic. So I'm hoping for me getting these sort of feelings about Crystal that I am going to align with these books. I don't know anything about the books. I know that I've wanted to read Kindred for a while. I've never heard of uh, Hunted by Gabriel, the author's escaping me, and I have never read the uh, Madison Kate the series. And the first one that is off the rank is Hate. And this one is, we're all reading this. There's a group of us and we're all reading this. So we're, you're probably going to get all different types of uh, feelings on this book and all that sort of stuff. But as I said, I don't know anything about it. I'm going into it completely blind, which is how I like to go into my books. I am listening to the audio with this one because I had to cut this pretty fine. I had to fit this in because I've been doing the Women's Prize for Fiction and that was 16 books. So I am doing one weekend reading all the books. So we together are going to be hanging out in this disaster area that I call a crafting studio. <laughs> you can see I've just got crap everywhere. And you know what? I've seen it messier, so this is not too bad. I'm not cleaning up that end because I don't need to quilt this weekend, but I do need to sew some stuff. Um, if I remember to turn the camera on, I, I will turn the camera on and you'll get little snippets of that. But yeah, so as I said, I'll be reading, first I'll be reading um, Hate by um, Tate James and then I'm going to be reading Kindred and then I'm going to be reading Hunted. I think that that is the order I'm going to do it in but we'll get I guess we'll see when we get to the end of it right. So as I said I don't know anything about these books but I have wanted to read out of all of them Kindred is one that I've wanted to read for a while so Anyway, I'm going to get on with it. Um, I haven't looked up all the stats and all that sort of stuff. When I've read the book and whatnot, I'll probably run through the stats on what the ratings are on Goodreads and whatnot. But for now, I'm going to get stuck into cleaning. I don't want to. Uh, but first, I think I'll go and make a cup of coffee. And then I'll come out and start getting into the cleaning. At least then I've got a cup of and that might motivate me a little bit while listening to Hate. I will check in probably around the 50% mark and let you know how I'm feeling about it. Hi, everybody, and welcome back. All right, so today I'm over at my husband's workshop. I'm in the tipper truck. We're bogged, <laughs> and so he has um, called me over here to help him get um, out of the bog. So I'm in the tip truck, he's in his tow truck. Uh, we're not having much luck at the moment, but while I'm sitting here waiting for him to grab tools and all that sort of stuff, I uh, have finished Hate by Tate James. Now, um, I was going to do uh, a check-in, but I just got stuck into this book, and I, for, ever, for obvious reasons, I've not done a check-in because uh, I've been over here for a while. So basically what the book is about, and I didn't really go into much detail in the first clip because I didn't know what the book was about. I wanted to go into it blind. Now, we are all reading this, and so basically um, we have uh, Madison Kate, who is uh, a senior in high school. She's gone to a Halloween party and uh, got left with her um, best friend Brie and ended up at an amusement park where there is an illegal MMF, MMA fight. And so she's watching and all the rest of it when all hell breaks loose. And she then, her and her friend are running because shots were fired, someone looks dead and, and they're running to, to escape. And um, someone is chasing her through the amusement park and this is where she meets the three main characters um, at this amusement park. And because there was a, it ended up being a riot, houses were burnt down and all that sort of stuff. And basically, um, they saved her from this Zane, I think his name is. 
anyway, the, the leader of um, the other gang, who is Archer's brother, I think. Um, and so basically, Archer, Steele, and Cody are the three main um, male protagonists, in, uh, male characters in this. And so basically, they find her and hide her and help her escape from that. Um, and then they set her up on the, the side of the road, and basically, she's arrested, and she's blamed for um, setting up the riot and all this sort of stuff. So basically um that's how our story starts out and then because she is um used as a scapegoat her father uses it to rebuild the town and all that sort of stuff and he, he's a real arrogant sort of dude and so he let her take the fall for it and basically um that meant that uh she was sent away to cambodia and she was there for i think it was a year or maybe 10 months or something her auntie died and she was sent back and subsequently she's turned back up to her father's new house doesn't know the gate code or anything like that and who should be living in the house but the three male guys that she thinks set her up um, so yeah, all right, I'll be back in just a second because we're about to do the full move thing, um, as you can see there. So yeah, we're bogged. My husband's going to do that. that. See, I do actually have a husband. That's what he looks like. <laughs> um, so yeah. So I thought I'd drop this in because this is what I'm doing while um, reading the book. He's asked me to get out because he's going to um, put it in. He's going to lift up the back because it's the back corner that's blocked and then we're going to try and get it out. Yep. And the truck was full of dirt so we had this, all that dirt that you can see over there that was all shoveled out so bring it up a little bit more. At least you get to drive my ute so that's a good thing. True. Because it's awesome. Not as good as my WRX, I'm sorry my friend. And we're out. Okay, so I am back home. I've just pulled into the driveway. I couldn't record in the, the car that I brought home because my car has got a misfire. So it's staying over at the workshop, but I'm home now. Um, as you've seen from <laughs> the little mishap that my husband had this morning, it's all sorted and we're good to go. All right, so just continuing on with um, hate. Now, um, I forget where I sort of left off, but um, yeah, we she was back in town and she was living with the three guys that she had met previously so basically she was used as a scapegoat and um, it wrecked her life she lost all her ivy league placements and all that sort of stuff her father had rebuilt the town and all that and basically built this um college that she's going to go to and she gets home and she's not all too happy so for the most part this book is a lot a lot about her getting revenge and all that sort of stuff and there's some steamy moments through it um do I find them super spicy? Probably not, but there is definitely some steamy moments through it and there's some definitely, you know, spicy scenes and whatnot, but not as much as I was hoping for. Um, I do like a lot of spice in my books. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know what that says about me, but anyway, I do like a lot of spice in my books and I'm not uh, overly fond of a slow burn. Um, I sort of like to for it to get right into it and the book started out really promising because the fir the first scene where she was running and then these guys pulled her to hide her from the other uh, gang member and whatnot um Cody was like whispering against her neck and it seemed like it was going to get like straight into it and it just didn't it sort of just fizzled for me anyway it sort of fizzled but in saying that I really liked the storyline in this book and the stalker side of it and, you know, the tension between the characters and, you know, ultimately the seamy parts and all that sort of stuff. I did like that. Is it a five-star read for me? Probably not. It's probably run-of-the-mill, but here's the kicker. The book ended and I'm like, damn it, now I'm going to have to read the rest. So I'm not going to go into the reading the rest on this vlog, but I will end up picking up the series. They're on KU, so it's not going to be a hardship to pick them up and, and read them. Um, some of the cover, like the cover that I'm showing here is like the, but there are other covers. Um, that, like I like this cover, but I do like the discreet covers as well. Um, they're really pretty, but they're just a little bit out of my price, price range. Um, you know, Now, you're probably wondering, I don't really have much more to say about it because this is going to be a continuing story. Like, I feel like I've just, I don't know, it's just, 
stopped abruptly like it was supposed to go on to another chapter so that's sort of how I went so it's definitely not something that you can go in thinking that you're just going to read one book if you are at all interested or at all love this you're going to want to go further in the series now um I don't know when I'm going to get to that but I just like to say crystal <laughs> thank you you could have gave me a warning <laughs> but anyway I am going to continue on with the series so in saying all that uh, apart from my little negative niggly bits that I it is more about me not about crystal um, I would give this book a definite 3.75 rating not quite a four or five star but um, I definitely three, 375 hands down it's got enough spice in it if you don't like a lot of spice it's gonna hit the spot if you like enemies to lovers this is gonna hit the spot if you like slow burn it's gonna hit the spot for you you're probably gonna rate it as a five star um, so yeah and also close proximity is sort of in this as well because she is forced to live with these guys so i don't know does that qualify as, as close pro proximity i would class it as that so yeah if you like all those sort of things um then you're going to really like this book and the banter in it as well like when they like even though she's really pissed off at him and they're trying to you know they call her princess a lot through this book and whatnot um princess and and you know all this sort of stuff sorry i'm outside so cars are going and whatnot um and yeah so <laughs> you know there's a lot there's a lot of banter between them and just the little pranks that she does like the little things that she does through like there's a couple of little pranks that she does through <laughs> which are funny one not so much but um yeah anyway i as i said i've given it a 3.75 thank you crystal for recommending this book it's uh when i started out i didn't think it was going to be a book for me and i didn't and now that it's finished i'm like damn it now i have to read the series so that, let's add another series to my ever-growing list i think i'm up at 32 or something like that anyway i'm going to continue on i was going to move on to kindred but i've actually pulled up uh hunted instead um, and that is by Gabrielle someone I cannot think so I am going to get into that again I've gone into this blind I am not reading any of the synopsis or anything like that although I believe it is a thriller and it is set in Australia and an Australian author so this ticks some boxes for me I need to read more Australian authors it's set in Australia and uh, it's a thriller so I like these sort of books I'm only just starting to get into Australian th thrillers and whatnot I've le read a few Australian authors uh, for historical fiction and and some crime fiction um, and that's if I'm right I could be completely wrong because I'm not going to look it up because if I go and look it up then I'm going to inadvertently read that synopsis and I don't want to do that uh, I do have this on audiobook as well so it's not going to take me too long it's not an overly long book um, I just looked it's on Everand and I just looked and I think I've only got like three and a half hours to go so again I'm probably not going to do a check-in for this I'm probably just going to uh, come back and talk about it. we'll see how we go if I feel like I need to check in for it I will but if not I'll just come back at the end because it's not overly long all right I'm gonna head off get on with the rest of my day it's now after lunch I'm absolutely famished um, go and have something to eat and uh, yeah <laughs> and uh, I hope you like the little bit of b-roll that we had of what I did on my Sunday morning um, yeah from crafting to trucking so yeah that's where we went Anyway, have a great day and I'll see you soon. Hi everybody and welcome back. All right, so I'm here to do my wrap up for The Hunted by Gabrielle Bergmoser. Um, I think that's how you pronounce their name. But anyway, um, we don't come here for the pronunciations, right? So anyway, I um, picked this up yesterday, which was Sunday. And uh, as you've seen from the previous clips, I had a bit on, on Sunday, but I still managed to get this book read. So I finished it last night and um, I've sort of sat on it for a little while to, you know, mull it over and all that sort of stuff so let me tell you a little bit about this book all right so as i said it was published in 2020 uh, i've just got good reads up here and it has a rate star rating of 3.80 it's had three and a half thousand ratings on it um i have never heard of this uh author before um so this is obviously the first time i'm reading them and um if i haven't already said it is actually a debut novel from them back in 2020 obviously they have written more since then uh because there is a there's a second book to this um series now it is set in australia it is a horror thriller fiction crime um, it's also very suspenseful <laughs> to say the least so um, I picked this up not knowing anything about it uh, as you heard and I've gone into this totally blind and I was absolutely blown away so as I said it is set in um, Australia in Outback Australia uh, the descriptions in this of the dingy little roadhouse and all that sort of stuff that Frank owns is like spot on I've actually seen dingy little roadhouses like that um, in you know like these tiny little towns don't have a lot of people in them and stuff like that so they're just there and they don't they just get on with it <laughs> that. like even really big ones I've seen that have been so dingy looking and all that sort of stuff so the descriptions were on point for this one in my opinion um, but yeah yeah, I 
I did not know that this was an Australian author. I did not know anything about it when I went in. But I tell you, I could not put this book down. I started listening to this when I got back um, from my husband's workshop. And I was so, I was dog dead tired because I hadn't slept very well. But I could not stop listening to this book. I was just disappointed that I couldn't do some immersive reading because I think it would have just added to the experience. The narrator, who I cannot for the life of me uh, think who that was right now. And I haven't got ever end up. But the narrator did a fabulous job of it. Um, there was just so many things to like about this audio book. The tension was right, the pacing was right, everything was absolutely right. Um, now, I say that it is a thriller, but it was more like a horror um, suspense to me um, than a, a thriller, but it was still... <laughs> It would still will fall under that. All right. So basically, um, we are following the story. Uh, we we meet Frank. Uh, he owns the dingy little um, the dingy little, <laughs> little uh, roadhouse. So a roadhouse, for those that don't know, is like in the outback. It is a long way between towns, and you'll get these these service stations. Uh, the sometimes the roadhouses can be really big. They sell a lot of food and all that sort of stuff. They have dining rooms and stuff like that. They're usually what we call truck stops because a lot of truckies will stop there because there's showers, all the things. Then you've got these other little um, type of roadhouses that. Um, they call roadhouses because generally the people live there, they have a service station, they have a small storefront, they'll have, you know, odds and ends like batteries, all that sort of stuff. Things that you might need while you're traveling, you know, they might sell some um, spare batteries for cars, they might have fan belts, all that sort of stuff. Things that possibly could go wrong with your car that you can pick up because there's no big town. They're usually between towns when there's hundreds of kilometers between towns, so you don't run out of fuel because if you run out of fuel, then it's a long way and, yeah, so, and, it, you know, the traffic isn't quite intensive or anything like that they like you're in the middle of nowhere so they generally have you know fuel they might have a small kitchen where you can get stuff so this this is what his was uh very dingy just had the bare essentials had a kitchen and all that sort of stuff we first uh meet him um where a, a traveling couple come to get some fuel and all that sort of stuff they walk in ask if the pump pumps are, are working because they don't get used very much and all that sort of stuff and <laughs> anyway and he's like he's a bit suspect because you know he's a loner and all that sort of stuff um and then we have that scenario where they come on and then like this is the opening scenes and while they're getting um their food and all the rest of it another car comes in but it comes in at the wrong angle uh, it parks wrong and then subsequently a girl gets out she's covered in mud and blood and hits the pavement real hard so they take her in and try to figure out what's going on they're about to call the police she comes to and says don't call the police um, so she, so they don't call the police and then it goes to then. So then we're getting to know, um, the, uh, Simon and, uh, what was her name? Ma Maddie, was it? I think it was Maddie. Um, anyway, getting to know, um, oh, what is her name? That is bugging me now. Let me just see if it mentions it here. Maggie, sorry. Uh, I think it was something like that. So uh, Maggie and Simon's story. Maggie meets Simon in a pub and subsequently convinces him to travel together. And then she also convinces him to go to this small town. They get to this small town and Simon has a really uneasy feeling about this small town. Um, <laughs> the way that the all that describe this, I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I've been to a town like that. <laughs> where everybody's a little bit sus, you know, you just feel them on edge, like they've got secrets and all that sort of stuff. I don't know, paranoia maybe, maybe I should see a doctor. But anyway, uh, <laughs> anyway, I was fully immersed in this story. Like I was having a fun time going, yeah, I think I know towns like that. I think I've lived in a town like that. Um, but anyway, um, <laughs> so we, we they're, they're there and um, we slowly find out why Maggie is traveling and all that sort of stuff. Her mother went missing 20 years ago and the last known place was around this area that uh, they know of. And so Maggie's there to find um, her, her mother will find out what happened to her mother. Meanwhile, Simon is in full-blown paranoia um, and doesn't know, like doesn't want to be there, thinks that she's set him up and all that sort of stuff. And also she's carrying a big bag of cash as well um, of $100 bills and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, it was it's, it's all a little bit suspect on her part and he's like sort of just feeling really uneasy there like and the people are uh, coming across real creepy and um, all that sort of stuff. So fast forward to I think it's a, a, the next day or a couple of days later some stuff goes down and I'm just having having a look if it's on the um, synopsis here because I didn't read the synopsis okay so um yeah it's, it's not mentioned in the synopsis so but it basically Maggie is the catalyst for this whole story so she is looking for her mother she meets Simon gets Simon to this um to this town and then subsequently she leaves 
um, I'm like, and I don't know really how much more to say except for the title pretty much tells you everything, okay, The Hunted. Um, that is basically what happens. Um, and so then when they end up to uh, the, when Maggie ends up at the roadhouse, there's this, uh, there's this other couple, there's another guy that has also turned up to get gas and all that sort of stuff. And he's turned up right on closing and Frank's trying to get rid of him because he knows that, sh that stuff's going to go down and all this sort of stuff. So he's got the added stress that his granddaughter's there, which he has not really ever seen that much because he doesn't talk to his son or anything. Um, and so she's really shy. So she's been thrown into the deep end of it. <laughs> All the things that could possibly go wrong go wrong. And um, and I don't know how much more to say of this because I just think everybody should pick this up. And now it does fall under the horror, but it's it's only got some little bits that are like body horror in it, which is pretty gruesome. Thing, like when you think about it, I think you're imagining right. Like it wasn't overly descriptive or anything like that, but it's enough to get your imagination running wild. <laughs> Let me just say that, right? And um, yeah, I just... I don't know what else I can say about this without giving too much away, except that the title is telling you what's going on. So uh, essentially the um, people in this town are now hunting her down for whatever reason that is. And I'm just going to leave it at that. I can honestly say that I have given this a solid five stars. I had the best time, um, probably because I had... I, like, it didn't know anything about it. It was just intense. Um, now, when I was talking to someone about it yesterday, I have not watched Wolf Creek, but I I thought it might have been a bit like that. But um, I've gone and read the um, the uh, synopsis this morning after reading it, and it says um, it's got echoes of a Deliverance and Battle Royale. Now, I have no idea what they are because I've never read them or even seen – I know that there's a movie – Deliverance, but I have never seen that movie. Um, I have never seen um, Wolf Creek either, um, but I know that he sort of hunted people, but I think that that is more horrific than this one. But anyway, um, and it says here, uh, this type of horror action thriller isn't usually my thing, um, but I did love this book. So that was one of the review reviews on it as well. Um, and I'm just like, it, and another review here is a high octane roller coaster of a novel, br brilliantly written, strong characters to cheer for, and just uh, just don't read it before you go to sleep, like I did. <laughs> I did. Um, it didn't affect my dreams or anything like that. So, but then you know, I'm I'm a little bit broken, so. <laughs> On that sort of stuff so take that for what you will um the entire book is just pure fast-paced tense and i love the insane uh every insane page of it the, and these are just some of the things that people are saying about it and i would have to agree with every one of these uh even the squeamish would find it hard to put this book down <laughs> now it's not an overly long book either it only comes in at 288 pages um and it's come out in august of 2020 so like if you have not picked this book up Goodness, you need to pick this book up. So all I am going to say here is I think I can trust Crystal on the thriller horror aspects of books. So I'm pretty happy with this book, Crystal. So thank you very much for um, <laughs> recommending this. Uh, the next, and I'm just going to leave it there because I'll end up giving it away because I'm very excited to read the second book. There is a second book to this. So again, Crystal got me with a series. There is a second book to this and it is also on Everend as well. So I'm going to probably listen to that in the next couple of weeks. Um, probably in June, I might try and fit it in for uh, Amazing Readathon or something along those lines. But anyway, I am now going to move on to Kindred. This is the last book that I have to um, read. Now, again, I am going into this blind because this is, a t this is like seeing if I can trust recommendations from Crystal without having to, to read synopsis or anything like that. So I'm going into this blind. I'm not bringing it up. I don't want to know. Although um, it's Octavia E. Butler is the author and it's it has been something that I've wanted to um, read for a while. I think I first come across this maybe last year or at the end of 2022 when a couple of people, um, I think Courtney from Tangible Reads was doing an Oct uh, Octavia E. Butler, um, like reading a lot of their books and um they, and Courtney talked about it on her channel. Now, can I remember what she said about it? No. Did I know that it went onto my TBR? Yes. Um, so I'm pretty excited to read this. Again, I have this on audiobook. So I, as you notice, I haven't really been doing check-ins because these books haven't been overly long. Um, and quite honestly, I didn't want to put the book down to do a check-in for Hunted. I'm sorry, but that's why you've got to wrap up. Um, and it was hard to talk about it too without giving too much away. So um, because I feel like with thrillers, when you talk about thrillers, you really have to do a very, very brief and it's more about the vibes that you get from it when you talk about them because you can give them away and then that just that sort of sucks and that wrecks it for everybody else so yeah um yeah so I'm going on to uh Kindred and uh as I said this is an anticipated one this is one that I've wanted to read for a while the premise that I from what I can remember um 
I'm like, oh, I need to read that. Like I can remember what was happening, but I can't really remember what uh, Courtney said about it. So it'll be interesting to see um, if I can trust Crystal on uh, this one as well. So, so far we've had one like that's a bit, mm, how you going? Uh, we've had one that I'm absolutely wrapped with. So a five star. So I'm, I'm happy about that. And we'll see what we can get with the next one. Maybe we might get another high one, but I will check in uh, as soon as I've read it and I'll see you then. Bye. Hi everybody and welcome back. All right. We're here to talk about Kindred by Octavia E. Butler, uh, which is the third book for Can We Trust Crystal? All right. Well, how did I feel about this book? Let's, let's start with the bits and pieces that we need to know about this book. First of all, first of all it was published in 1979. Uh, it has 288 pages and it, uh, let me just have a look, it has a 4.30 rating on uh, Goodreads and there is over 200,000 ratings on this and 24,000 written reviews. All right, the genres that this book falls under is historical fiction, science fiction, fantasy, time travel, classics, historical. It has all the things. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah all right so uh, I don't I haven't really gone into detail of what the books are about and all, all that sort of stuff because I've wanted to go into each and every one of these books a little bit blind now when we did the can we trust Brittany um, collaboration uh, most of those books I already knew about because Brittany had talked about them people on Spencer talked about them it's hard to avoid that sort of stuff the all these books I went into blind I had never heard of Tate James before I don't know where I've been obviously under a rock I had never heard of an Aussie author not surprising because I'm a bad Aussie and don't read a lot of Australian authors uh, Gabriel Bergmoser uh, I think that's how he pronounced his last name and of course I have had Octavia E Butler on my to read list because Courtney from Tangible Reads had I'm, I'm pretty sure it was Courtney or it might have been now. No, I think it was Courtney uh, from Tangible Reads. Uh, basically, read nearly all of their work. So um, I was, I had seen, and it was an author that I wanted to try out. So I definitely knew about this book. Uh, I didn't know what it was about though, um, because once Courtney started talking about, it, I'm like, this is an author that I really want to um, read. So I'm going to switch this video off now and add promptly add these books to my TBR, and then promptly forgot about it. So when um, we were uh, selecting our books for or, um, what if we could trust Crystal and the recommendations that Crystal had given us I picked this one because as I said it was on my uh, to be read well not to be read but I want to read a list so um, yeah I jumped on it now I as I said knew nothing about this book I had no idea what it was about I knew it was historical fiction and all I really knew was it was historical fiction and it was centered around slavery what I did not know it was a science fiction fantasy time travel book <laughs> So I was pleasantly surprised that, um, and that it was published in 1979. I thought it was a, I don't know, a, a timelines in my head. I don't know. They go in there and then they get all jumbled up. But anyway, I didn't realize it was such an, an older book. So um, I was pretty happy about that, that I was reading a back list book, not a new release. So that's always nice because I feel that some of these book, older books you can still find and you can get them a lot cheaper on Kindle and stuff like that. So, or you can find them in secondhand bookshops and, and all that sort of stuff. So yeah. All right, so you might be wondering yourself what this book is about. Uh, basically, we're following the story of Dana and uh, Rufus. Uh, Rufus is in the 1800s, 1815, is, I think is when we first meet him, and uh, Dana lives in the modern world in 1976. Yes, you know, 1976. Um, and she is a modern black woman uh, who is celebrating her 26th birthday with her new husband, and they've just moved into a new house, if I remember correctly. Um, and while they are... Um, unpacking uh she is abruptly ripped from said life and taken all the way back to the 1800s onto a um plantation that has slaves so this is in the height uh, this is this is years before the um the the slaves were freed and all that sort of stuff for the civil war and all that sort of stuff right so this is way back then so so she's landed on this and the boy is in the river and he's drowning so drowning so she saves him um and then the mother uh who freaks out because you know um, she's standing on the sidelines and watching her son drown. Um, and basically then um, Dana saves him only to have a gun pointed at her head. Uh, and yeah, she's ripped back to uh, the present day. And she was only gone, like even though she was gone for uh, like 10 minutes or whatever, she was only gone for seconds in the 1976 timeline. So um, and then the story basically just keeps going from there. And um, so there is a connection between um dana and rufus rufus is her 
great grandfather, I think. Um, and so, yeah, so every time he puts himself in danger, she gets ripped out of 1976 and taken back. The problem with this, it is at the height of slave ownership. And so she, and she is also black, but she talks differently because she is a modern day woman. And so to cover this, she says she's from New York and, and people of that time are a little bit suspect of her um, and all that sort of stuff because of the way she talks. Uh, and basically, um, yeah, <laughs> it, it just unfolds from there. Um, I, I, I'm laughing because I, I'm just imagining like in my own head, I, I can't even like, I can't even wrap my head around <laughs> that sort of, um, like how you would even handle yourself. Like if time thing, time travel was a, um, thing like, and you found yourself in that situation, how you would even wrap your head around one that it's happening to you two, how the other people would perceive you and how you would assimilate to that. And that's how we go through the book, um, which is really good in, in that aspect because at first she felt like she was acting and then there's certain lines that are thrown out in this book of how easy it is to be, to become a slave. Um, while at first you might resist it, then you just become, um, submissive essentially and just try to fit in to save your and it's easier to become a slave than what people think so there is a lot of um thought-provoking bits and pieces in this book that just like make you stop and think like because as I don't know I, I don't I don't know how to sort of how I feel about like I would think that I like how I would react. It was how I feel, how I would react. So if it was me put in that situation, I think that I would rebel. But then when this line is said, it's like, well, self-preservation. You would, you would comply because you would want to one save your family, keep everybody together because you know the the buying and selling of slaves and all that sort of stuff is a feel. And that's how I felt while I was reading this book. Like, like while it's a science fiction fantasy and all the rest of it, it actually got me thinking. Well, how would I react in that situation? And then also the prejudice that you get as, um, because of all the horrific things that that um, slave owners did to to um, the slaves and all that sort of stuff even bedding them, um, keeping them as, for lack of a better word, as, as a, a sex slave and all that sort of stuff. Like these topics are all brushed on very lightly in this book, but it's how the um, other people are, the other slaves are perceiving their own people who are being submissive and connecting with their slave owners. So there, for instance, there is a situation where, um, Dana is has been requested after many many years um, because she's going in and out of this timeline and sometimes there's like six years jump from the 1800s timeline um, but it's only been hours in the 1976 timeline so again it's not confusing at all like I know that it sounds confusing but it's not confusing at all um, I really liked how that was done so she's not aging in um, in her own timeline she's not aging but everybody's aging in the other timeline. So she meets Rufus when he's like only three or four or something like that. No, he was only young. Uh, he might've only been five, I think. And then when she comes back again, the next time he's a little bit older and it's always when his life is in peril that he calls her, but he can also see her in her timeline. So there's that connect spiritual connection between the two and that's pulling her back. Um, and so, yeah, so, and as I was saying, the, the way that the other slaves tr were treating her and another um, character in the book, Alice. Basically, because they got too close, so Alice ended up with Rufus, and there was a whole horrific story around that, um, and begrudgingly ended up with him and having children to him, but then the other slaves were calling her a white N-word um, because she was essentially trying to save herself and keep her children close right and so they were the, they were becoming prejudiced against her and they were also coming pre prejudiced against um dana because the last time that she was in this timeline uh basically her the his mother hated her over the years but then um requested her because she could read and write and all that sort of stuff you know and it also like talked about different things like and also dana's ignorance about that time as well as a modern day um black woman her ignorance and the things that she didn't know about slavery. So she was getting a very good eyeful of what actually happened and all that sort of stuff as well. So I feel like I'm not explaining this book very well. All I can say is if you have not read this book, pick it up. It is amazing. I had such a good time with this, this book. Um, 
I liked how the opening started and all that sort of stuff. Uh, we even, you know, like we get a really good close look at um, at her experiences and stuff like that. We also get that connection between her and Rufus and also how to end that connection also comes into it as well. Um, it was really well done. I never got confused. A lot of time with time travel, you can get a little bit jarred and all that sort of stuff. But this was so well done that I I basically couldn't, um, sorry, my alarm just went off. Uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't get confused by this. It was just so well done. It was so clear. It was so concise. Um, the timelines were crisp. All the things that you want from a dual timeline um, uh, was there. And to boot, it was historical fiction, which, as you know, is my jam. And this is such a different book. I had, like, historical fiction, science fiction, fantasy, time travel in one book. Like, oh, my God, <laughs> what's not to like? So as you can tell, um, I really like this book. Uh, the only thing that sort of let me down a little bit was I felt like it was a little bit too short. I would have liked to have been in this world a little bit longer. Um that hasn't brought my star rating down any. Um, and while I enjoyed her writing and uh, all that sort of stuff, I did find that uh, the character of her husband, her modern-day husband, who also got transported back as well, um, basically I found him too, too flat, like there wasn't enough around him, and he was a major player in this in this book, and I just found him a little bit flat for my liking. Um, there could have been a little bit more exploration. Now, I know the story is Dana and story, uh, Rufus' story, and he was really a secondary character, but he still could have been a little bit more than what he was, so that did bring my star rating down a little bit. Um, I can honestly say that if Crystal gives you an historical fiction recommendation, because I have read a couple other books that um, that – uh, Crystal has talked about on her channel before, uh, or authors anyway, um, I can honestly say you can trust Crystal on her recommendations for um, historical fiction uh, and even thrillers <laughs> as well. So um, I have had a great time doing this. And um, as and did I give you my star rating? I've given it four stars. Uh, so I'm up there with everybody else on this. Um, the majority, of, I would actually buy this book and put it on my shelf. So um, I'm pretty, pretty keen to read more from um, Octavia E. Butler as well, just to, I love their style of writing. Um, it really, really does draw you in. And the imagery that her writing provokes, now it's not overly descriptive, but it's so clear and concise that it automatically gives you the imagery that you're looking for um and some of the imagery is a little bit queasy um the things that that happened back in in um is it antebellum south is where the story where she's transported to from california um and so yeah so i have given this a um four and a half a four star rating sorry and um i the more i think about it I, the more i want to raise my um my star rating like I'm just sitting here thinking I'm like four and a half four and a half stars is better where it sits because realistically everybody else was like great in the book it was just Kevin Kevin's character that brought it down a little bit for me so I'm just only going to take half a star off of that one I think and that's what I like about doing these vlogs when I sit down and think about it and talk about like this sat with me I even recommended it to my husband I said you should read this because he loves time travel stuff and all that sort of stuff and he goes is it free because he's on a free kick at the moment on audible um I said no it's not I said but it's worth a credit worth a credit for sure um that i personally listened to it on everand i said to him it is on everand uh, if you want it um and i have it on kindle as well so technically i do own it um but uh he said no no i don't want to log into everand he goes because he goes you get put in everand channel otherwise but um i think that um I might gift it to him uh and that so yeah but i really really enjoyed this book i i'm with crystal everybody should read this book <laughs> It's that simple. So that, for, uh, on that note, it comes to the end of this Can We Trust Crystal. So um, two out of the three, I'm not too sure about hate, uh, as you know, but I'm going to go yes, we can trust Crystal because the simple fact is I am going to continue on with that series. Even though I, you know, like if, if I think if all of these books were in, all of the hate books were in one collection, like one book, 
I probably would have liked it better, but because it was a series and now I've got to go to another book, it's sort of that Jarby, like, is it really worth reading? I'm curious enough to go on with the series only because of how book one ended on a cliffhanger. So I now want to go on to the second ones. I don't know when I'm going to get to those. Um, I believe that they are on Kindle Unlimited, so I may end up chucking the second one in for May, and I might just read one a month or something over the next couple of months. But um, as for the thriller and the historical fiction, done well done well um but as i said this is the that is how i'm feeling about the three that i read uh we um well i've had a lot of fun doing it and uh, i'm enjoying uh learning about new authors and all that sort of stuff as well and starting to get a closer idea of what crystal's reading tastes are because if you remember at the beginning of the vlog i said i wasn't 100 percent like while i watch crystal i sort of met crystal when she was um pregnant with her her child uh at the late stages of her pregnancy so i didn't really get a good sense of the feeling and I, to be honest i didn't go back and watch a lot of videos and all that i just watched uh, current stuff so i didn't really have a strong sense of what uh crystal's reading taste is i have come to learn that her reading tastes are very eclectic like mine um so i think we align on that so there's probably going to be more um more often than not that I'm going to align with Crystal's, uh, especially comments, uh, like conversations we've had in the background and everything like that, uh, we do like some of the same authors as well. So it's very interesting when doing these sort of things that you find out about people uh, a little bit more. But anyway, as I said, that is the end of this vlog. I do hope that you've enjoyed my journey of getting to know Crystal's reading taste a little bit better and if we can trust her. And I'm going to say, yes, we can trust Crystal. Anytime that uh, Crystal gives me a recommendation, I'm going to snap that up, especially in the thriller and historical fiction um, genre. But that is it for me today. Now, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Go and check out all the other videos uh, that are centered around this collaboration the playlist is linked up down below uh, go and check that out and uh, yeah I um, get you to hit the subscribe button and then hop skip and jump over to the like button click that and uh, as always keep turning those pages and I'll see you in the next video bye for now